as if life paradoxes weren't enough to twist your mind. Today we will be diving into top five paradoxes of all time. Can your logic solve them? First one is Brouwer's fixed point theorem. This theorem states that for any continuous function mapping a non-empty compact convex set to itself, there is a point such that the function value at that point is equal to the point itself. To put it simply, imagine stirring a cup of coffee. No matter how you stir, there will always be at least one point in the liquid that remains in the exact same spot. The simplest forms of Brouwer's theorem are for continuous functions from a closed interval in the real numbers to itself or from a closed disk to itself. But it doesn't stop there. This theorem extends to continuous functions from a non-empty convex compact subset of Euclidean space to itself. Among hundreds of fixed point theorems, Brouwer's is particularly well known. In topology, it's one of the key theorems alongside the Jordan curve theorem and the Hairy Ball theorem. But the reach of Brouwer's fixed point theorem goes even further. It appears in unlikely fields such as game theory and economics. This theorem was first studied in the context of differential equations by French mathematicians like Henri Poincaré and Charles-Emile Picard. Next on our journey through the world of paradoxes, we encounter Russell's paradox. Named after the British philosopher and logician Bertrand Russell, this paradox is a cornerstone in the study of set theory and logic. It represents either of two interrelated logical antinomies. The most commonly discussed form arises in the logic of sets or classes. Imagine a set of all sets that do not contain themselves as a member. Some classes or sets seem to be members of themselves while others do not. For instance, the class of all classes is itself a class and so it seems to include itself. Conversely, the null or empty class must not be a member of itself. But here's where the paradox kicks in. Suppose we form a class of all classes that, like the null class, are not included in themselves. The paradox arises when we ask whether this class is a member of itself. If it is, then it must not be. And if it is not, then it must be. This self-referential loop creates a logical contradiction. The other form of Russell's paradox involves properties. Some properties seem to apply to themselves while others do not. For example, the property of being a property is itself a property while the property of being a cat is not itself a cat. Now consider the property that something has just in case it is a property that does not apply to itself. Does this property apply to itself? If we assume it does, then it doesn't, and if we assume it doesn't, then it does. Once again, we are faced with a contradiction. Continuing our exploration of the enigmatic world of set theory and mathematical logic, we arrive at the continuum hypothesis. This hypothesis holds significant weight both mathematically and philosophically, and its story begins with the birth of set theory itself. In 1874, the mathematician Georg Cantor made a groundbreaking discovery. He demonstrated that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the natural numbers and the algebraic numbers. More astonishingly, he showed that no such correspondence exists between the natural numbers and the real numbers. This revelation introduced the concept of different sizes or cardinalities of infinity. Cantor then posed a profound question. Is there an infinite set of real numbers that is of intermediate size, one that cannot be matched one-to-one -one with the natural numbers or the real numbers? The continuum hypothesis suggests that no such set exists. Despite his best efforts, Cantor was unable to prove or disprove this hypothesis, leading to its inclusion in David Hilbert's famous list of unsolved problems in mathematics. Fast forward to the 20th century, where the combined efforts of Kurt Goodell and Paul Cohen provided a surprising resolution. They showed that hypothesis cannot be decided using the standard axioms of set theory, known as zermelo frankel set theory, with the axiom of choice. As we continue our journey through the labyrinth of mathematical logic and set theory, we encounter yet another profound and captivating problem known as the halting problem. In computability theory, the halting problem is the challenge of determining from a description of an arbitrary computer program and an input whether the program will finish running or continue to run forever. This problem isn't just a curiosity, it has deep implications for our understanding of computation and the limits of what can be known. The halting problem is undecidable, which means that no general algorithm exists that can solve the problem for all possible program input pairs. 
This realization shakes the very foundation of computability, illustrating that some functions, while mathematically definable, are not computable. To grasp the halting problem, we turn to the concept of a Turing machine, a mathematical model of computation defined by the legendary Alan Turing. The formal proof of the halting problem's undecidability reveals a fascinating paradox. Suppose there exists a program that can determine whether any given program halts. The proof then constructs a pathological program that, when given some input, passes its own source and its input to F and does the opposite of what F predicts. As we continue our journey through the labyrinth of mathematical logic and set theory, we encounter another profound and captivating set of ideas, Zeno's paradoxes. These philosophical arguments, presented by the ancient Greek philosopher Zeno of Elea, around 490-430 BC, are primarily known through the works of Plato, Aristotle, and later commentators like Simplicius of Cilicia. Zeno devised these paradoxes to support his teacher Parmenides' philosophy of monism, which posits that despite our sensory experiences, reality is singular and unchanging. The paradoxes famously challenge the notions of plurality, motion, space and time by suggesting they lead to logical contradictions. Zeno's work, primarily known from second-hand accounts since his original texts are lost, comprises 40 paradoxes of plurality, which argue against the coherence of believing in multiple existences and several arguments against motion and change. Of these, only a few are definitively known today, including the renowned Achilles Paradox, which illustrates the problematic concept of infinite divisibility in space and time. In this paradox, Zeno argues that a swift runner like Achilles cannot overtake a slower moving tortoise with a head start, because the distance between them can be infinitely subdivided, implying Achilles would require an infinite number of steps to catch the tortoise. These paradoxes have stirred extensive philosophical and mathematical discussion throughout history, particularly regarding the nature of infinity and the continuity of space and time. Initially, Aristotle's interpretation suggesting a potential rather than actual infinity was widely accepted. However, modern solutions leveraging the mathematical framework of calculus have provided a different perspective, highlighting Zeno's significant early insight into the complexities of infinity and continuous motion. Join us next time as we delve even deeper into these fascinating concepts, continuing our quest to uncover the hidden truths that govern the universe of mathematics. Until then, let the mysteries of the infinite and the undecidable spark your curiosity.